Okay, we are recording. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, the September 14th Amherst Cultural Council meeting. I'm going to go ahead and read the required script from the Attorney General's office um, regarding virtual meetings, which we, we do uh, when we meet virtually. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 21, uh, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so on Zoom. Um, this link was posted publicly. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public are permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we're unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship uh, and despite best efforts, we and we always post our meeting recordings on the town um, YouTube channel. And so and that's something that's been useful to me too, by the way, is to be able to go back and um, look at previous meetings as well. So then we have to do just a little uh, audio check and make sure everybody has audio. So if I just sort of call your name and you can say here or gotcha or something like that, um, so we can check the AV. And um, Eleanor, do you mind starting? Here. Um, Julian? I'm here, thanks. Toby? Here. Cody? here and i see rachel is coming in right now can you hear us rachel i can hear you i'm here hello everyone hello welcome wonderful um okay so yeah so uh i guess we're we're at a quorum um and there are a number of um you know sort of action items that we that we do have um you know, there are some simple things that we can do fairly efficiently, especially with, with a smaller quorum. So like we have several months worth of minutes that um, we need to approve. And, you know, that's, I think that's an important thing for us, um, especially as we get into our deliberation meetings. Um, the the minutes of our meetings become more and more important to applicants. Um, so we want to make sure that those are up to date and fresh. And what happens is, you know, we'll have a meeting tonight. Um, Somebody will need to take minutes, um, uh, and then um, Julianne or I will send them out to the group before the next meeting for you to review in advance, and then we just vote on them. Once the once the group actually approves the minutes, that's when they get posted to the website, just so uh, everybody has a chance to sort of you know come to a consensus on that. Um, I I'm going to go ahead and suggest that we could take uh, a motion to approve all three sets of minutes as opposed to one by one. Um, but of course, you know, if anybody has read them over and wants to discuss or has questions, that's that's wonderful too. That's fine. I'll Julia. second that. Okay. Well, I wasn't actually making the motion, but I I definitely implied the motion. Um, so I will okay. I'll go ahead and own it. And <laughs> um, okay. And then we'll do a, a quick roll call vote and just get folks to approve on that. Um, Eleanor. Yes. Toby. Yes. Cody. Yeah. And Rachel. Yes. Okay. Would you great. like me to take notes today? That would be awesome if you don't mind. That would be really wonderful. Sure. I mean, you all, you and Julian are running the meeting and, you know, so um, I might go off camera because sometimes I can actually concentrate better. <laughs> I found that out the other day. <laughs> I no worries meeting, whatsoever. So. Um, okay. Yeah. Also, I'll, I that was the first item then. It was the approval of the minutes, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. And if you look at one of the other ones, you'll see that, um, and this is important because we're going to talk about the secretary position in a moment. So if anybody's, you know, kind of thinking about it, um, I think the main elements that we always make sure we have are like time, date, um, and then um, attendees, you know, who, who from the council was in the meeting. Um, and then just, you know, I think uh, Jenny Lind was a, was a long-term, long-time member of the council and she took really, really detailed minutes. I confess, like if I if I do it, I tend to be more of just sort of forward the action items and try to give a little bit of color commentary. So it's definitely, I mean, it's it's a really important job, um, but I think, you know, you can do it in your own way, so. And, and I would add that if you peruse the minutes, uh, especially as Jenny took them and others before her, you know, her, her model would have been to make sure all the topics are there, but nothing approaching us a, a transcript of, of everything that's said and we do have the meetings recorded for that purpose but um mostly just to kind of track what are the topics what was voted on um and things like that 
Well, presumably the agenda would become part of the minutes. And just so you all know, my, my note taking style is to only record decisions and next steps, not the process. So that's how I take notes. Um, but like you said, it's all recorded. So we need to check anything. But you and Matt can go over this first. Yeah. And tr truly, Rachel, if I'm ever taking minutes, I just I literally just use the agenda and I type into it, you know, and I rename, I rename it something else and then I type into it. So and it's pretty simple. Um, but of course, you would need it in word form. So, you know, whoever is the secretary, that's that is a good thing to to just think about is getting that in advance, the agenda in, in word form in advance. Um, OK, so let's see. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, Toby, this is your first uh, ACC meeting as a voting member. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I, I guess, you know, we have a actually we have three, uh, three, we have three new members here on the screen, although uh, Cody and Eleanor were here last time. But Toby, do you mind just sort of introducing yourself and, and telling us a little bit about, about who you are and, and your interest in the council? Sure. Um, my name is Toby Barnes and um, my wife and I moved here probably 14 years ago. Um, at the time, uh, before we were married, I was a uh, artist living in New York, a working artist in New York. And I continue to still make art. And in fact, I think I make more art in uh, Massachusetts or in Amherst than I ever did in the city. Um, and of course I have my two kids, um, Siri and Bodhi. And um, yeah, I, I guess that's about it. Um, I'm probably forgetting something, but. Do you mind if I ask what um, what drew you to the Cultural Council? Like, you know, where the interest came? Just we're always curious. Um, I guess I kept on meeting people and talking to people about. Um, um, they always understood that I was from another part of the art world. And if I had known anything about what was going on in town and and I talked to other practicing artists and um, it just seemed like there was a separation um, between the two. So, you know, and, and I've been kind of going on this whole thing where I was, I'm doing everything that I never, that's not an instinct for me to do. So to, to get involved or to, to see other art worlds, I think is um, a new thing that I'm trying out. It's yeah. like, yeah. You know, even have in, you even ever in, applied for a cultural council grant out of a curiosity? I think I have. I think I have um, maybe two or three years ago. Okay. Well, the reason I ask is last time Cody mentioned that, you know, he was uh, on an application last year and um, you'll definitely find, you know, from from year to year, various members are involved with various applications. And, um, you know, we have a very simple and kind of common sense um, recusal process. So like, yeah, I just I mean, for me, I, I'm excited to have, you know, you here as a, as a working artist, for sure. Uh, I think it really adds a lot to our discussion and um, and don't want don't want that to discourage you from, you know, applying for the grants. And we have a way of you know, putting that in a box and putting it to the side so that, you know, you're not in any way compromised. So um, welcome. Thank you. Um, okay, so I guess, you know, I, I think we should probably, you know, hold off the officer election until, until the end for maximum participation. Um, I wonder if we want to move over to the, um, the uh, amendment request from Davis. I'm kind of going a little bit out of order on the schedule, just just thinking of it. Seems like the public session debrief is probably. Sure, fine. yeah. Yeah, do you wanna speak about that? Uh, sure, I just hosted my session Monday night. Uh, I'll admit that I watched Matt's in advance and tried to cover all the topics he, he covers so that we could have a consistent message. Um, but much like you did, you know, we uh, met with the folks that were there. Um, I don't have a list. Some people came in, came out. I'd have to let, go back to the recording to kind of see who was who was there. But I think it was at most uh, four or five people at any any given time. And we did we did have some questions, um, but uh, no, nothing out of out of the ordinary. You know, folks wanting to confirm how early you know they could have had events in 2022. 
and, and apply for those. I guess the the toughest one was was the uh, the point about an institution can only apply once, and there was an Amherst High teacher who you know was finding that a little bit of a burden you know to have to get with everyone else on faculty um and coordinate you know all of their grants together mm -hmm. um but you know it was it was pretty pretty standard fare but it was you know a pretty decent turnout i guess so uh and nice involvement with people that's awesome um yeah i didn't have any turnout or i think i had one person but i was not sure if it was a bot you know kind of thing so i and actually it, use it I use it as a chance to go quickly through and and for um you know yeah. for our, our new our new folks this I think I mentioned it somewhere in an email maybe but um you know we're required like per the per the MCC guidelines we're required to do like one public information set I mean, of course all of our meetings are public but one session that's really focused on just disseminating information to folks who you know who want to learn more about the grant um process and uh, I won't lie, I, I did. I think I did mine on like the day after the grants opened because uh, I had my we had a we had a due date. <laughs> we have a we have a new baby, and I wanted to try to get in ahead of that if I could, and and that that worked out actually. Um, and so I went pretty quickly, just thinking that if I made a thirty minute recording, you know, and folks could watch it later. And, and Angela was pretty funny. She was like, "You have you you got eighty. You're up to eighty views." And I was like, wow, you know, like 15 <laughs> minutes of fame. Yeah, I think it was like 88. I looked at it right before we came in here. So, you know, I'm really, yeah. I'm really kicking on all cylinders here. You did a great job with it. It's really strange when it's not, it's not a call like this. And we didn't invite all of you to it because we can't have a quorum. So um, we have to be careful about that. But you're, you're just talking to a screen and their names on the screen. It's yeah. Matt, Matt was much more natural with it. I don't know. I found it a little awkward. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny because I, um, I don't know, I, I don't, I, one, one thing that I would say, oh, Rachel, go ahead, please. Sorry, I won't put this in the notes, but congratulations. I had no idea about your baby, <laughs> first of all. And <laughs> Thank then you very much. the question I have is, because um, I want to ask, well, I remember because Julian just raised it, is that so with the teachers at the high school, for example, so if they're putting in an application, it's fine as so long as their institution is based in Amherst, like the people filing the application don't have to be Amherst residents. Is that because I was no, just it wasn't it wasn't know. that it's if you read in the guidelines, it will say mm -hmm. specifically that, you know, well, one, one thing is that the individual who is, you know, the grant applicant, it, it always has to come down to one person and and each year any particular individual can only apply for one grant where they are the the main recipient so you know if if we had it uh let's take the teacher who's at amherst high you know if she's also an artist who wants to apply for for an art exhibit that she's doing with her own personal artwork that's not related to the school then she can't be the one person on the Amherst High grant application. Yeah, I got that part. I was just curious yeah. whether um, um, the person filing the application needs to be an Amherst resident as well as no. the organization being no. in Amherst. Okay. No, this would be more yeah. like, you know, if there was a science program and a theater program and a music program all coming from the high school and, and all, you know, basically sponsored by the high school, then that has to all be put together for, you know, a grant cycle for the high school i i did say that you know if it's outside of school and it's and it's a a club and and like the students who applied for the grant um was it pv P, i always say it wrong pvpa um that that there there are ways additional ways to do this outside of the organization if it's applicable to the, the particular group um so and when these things come come in, you know, one, I, I certainly encourage people to reach out to us if they had any questions like this. And when we've had duplicate uh, things come in, we try to work it out. But unfortunately, once that grant window closes, it usually means that people have to do one one or the other and make a decision if they've made the mistake of being on two in a way that's not supported or permitted. Right. So just in terms of communications, because obviously each of us will be you know, promoting the grants to mm -hmm. various people or organizations that we know. So 
And questions like that, that we can just answer, we can answer, but like, would you and Matt want to be answering all the questions, like just direct them all to you or like, that's what I mean by communications is that because the things that are in the guidelines already, we can help to clarify, right? As, as council yeah. members. I'd see the but, big thing um, is we don't want miscommunication. So definitely don't ans answer something if, you know, there's, there's uncertainty, but we have nine council members and, and we're, you know, we all serve together. So for myself, I don't, I don't feel the need to, you know, lock down and control all the communication. Uh, but it, it is important to say it correctly. And I, mm -hmm. I was a little flustered on the call because I know that they can apply for grants as early as July 1 of this last year, but I couldn't find it written anywhere on the call and I'm terrible at remembering numbers. So <laughs> Matt, tell me now if I messed that one up, you know? Well, it, that's kind of a funky thing. And I, I um, it doesn't this, happen much. Well, the answer is it's, it's a little bit, it's kind of, it's counterintuitive, I guess is the word I would use, but I, I just want to speak to just to everybody. Um, the written materials that are out there from the, like on the town Amherst cultural council site, and then that links over to the state uh, mass cultural council site, which we have our own, you know, page landing page there. And then all that directs to the local council guidelines document. Like that's where all the answers are. Um, so I really, you know, I encourage folks if if you get a question or if you're just curious, like that's the place to sort of, you know, just take some time and, re and read through that material. And then, um, you know, ultimately, I do think that a lot of this stuff winds up being very, you know, nuanced or procedural. And, and in those cases, yeah, I mean, reach out to one of us and we can certainly talk about it. But but I think, you know, um, I agree with Julianne, you know, folks are folks are certainly empowered to to speak about our program. I mean, that's the that's really the whole the, the whole gist of it. The, the thing that you're asking about is funky now because we're in this direct grant model where we give the cash mm -hmm. as soon as we have it. Um, but with that July 1st, so so we're in September of 22 right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody could, in, in our current application window, if they did something as far back as July 1st of this year, they could ask us for money for that project, like a project they've already completed or have already started. It just can't go any further back than that. So it's yeah. it's a like the, the application wasn't open, but but you know the um, the project was eligible going back. Yes, yeah, and we did I get following... into quite a quite a bit with that, and I appreciated in in your session that I watched that you know you brought up that we expected the funds in March and they didn't come in until May, and that while we again would expect the funds to be available in March, you know if 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 that's going to be a deal breaker for your particular event then you might not want to have an event until after the middle of 2023 to be sure that you have the funds in hand. And that certainly if someone's applying for an event that's already happened, you know, there are no, there are no guarantees, you know, we, we don't know, you can apply. It doesn't hurt to ask, but you know, they wouldn't get the money until everybody else does, you know, in this, this new direct granting, which is generally pretty good, but you know, it was, it was interesting because it's so much better than what we had before, but then there were, there were some folks on the call that were like, really, we'd have to wait. And it's like, you know, it, it's not on trees or in thin air, you know, it's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. And, and that is, I mean, for the, for our new folks, the, the timeline stuff, you know, we do, this does become a very timeline, you know, like it's a creative and pretty laid back enterprise in general, but the timeline does kind of, it, it really matters because we, you know, we have our deadlines with the state and then that in turn gives us <laughs> the funds or not. Um, and so, you know, the first deadline was September 1st to open the grant application, which we which we met thanks to truly one of the most um, efficient public meetings I've ever been a part of a couple of weeks <laughs> ago. Like that was that was amazing that we that we pulled that off. Um, so we that was September 1st. Obviously, October 17th, when the grants close, that's a that's a deadline on the grant on the applicants. Um, and then we'll have a, a January deadline for submitting our decisions to the state. And then, you know, we meet that deadline. Then they don't really have a deadline per se. You know, then, then it's a waiting game for us. The town, the funds will, will be dispersed directly to the town office, like the town clerk's office. I mean, I'm sorry, the town accountant's office. And, and that's like a, you know, we, we were told it was gonna be a, you know, four to six week process. It wound up being 
closer to three months this this current year. So you know, lesson learned. I mean, I think as as Julianne's saying, like we've been as we as we've been speaking with like applicants and prospective applicants this year, we've been really cautioning them, like, hey, you know, we'll turn this around. Like, and the town is amazing. Like, they turn it around within a couple of days. They really got the checks out the door so quickly. But we just caution folks exactly as you said. You know, if, if you're if you're literally counting on this cash on hand to do your project, then you may want to push it into the mid middle of the year or beyond, I think is, is that being said, you know, the state definitely aims to do better than whatever it was, you know, they, they do aim to be like within the February, you know, February, March, instead of like March, April. Um, so. Yeah. MCC had a bunch of new processes last year. One of them, the, the online application portal was, had an overhaul. Uh, yeah. there was, there was some turnover as far as, you know, who we were working with mid-year, and it, uh, may, maybe even above above that. I mean, I, 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 yeah, because in what in September I met with the guy who had moved up from Maryland to to um, head up part of the MCC or the entire thing. So there was just a lot of turnover and new processes in a good way. But you know, you, you got to get the kinks out of it. Well, yeah. That said, I, I was just gonna add, yeah. I agree, Julian. Is that I think even in the short time I've been serving on the council, it feels like things have really improved and um, been structured a lot better and easier for us to understand from our, our, you know, and to operate from this angle. And I was just gonna add that with the direct grant model and the timelines that we're talking about, because we're communicating that to all the applicants well in advance. So hopefully that helps people both to, you know, schedule their own um events or or just you know to manage expectations i think a lot better um mm -hmm. so so the sorry what is the january deadline for submitting the decisions i just want to have that for the minutes sure sure it's that's on us january 17th um okay that's on us to give uh mcc our our decisions based on the grants so exactly three months from October 17th yeah. to January 17th. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I guess before we go, I mean, I, I think we should try to get a couple of these pieces of business that are sort of, you know, pretty straightforward um, done if we can. But before we do, I mean, do any of our, our new folks, like, you know, there's no, there's no question that's too basic, right? It really is worth just chatting through things. If there's something on your mind that you really want to like know, um, you know, now's a good time to ask it because we're kind of just sort of talking about the process a little bit. I do have a question. I know I can participate with or did not applause because probably we will Okay, but can I say, well, it costs this much to get this or that, and no, because I see how much goes into it, but I don't want to step over that line. Yeah, I appreciate that question. And um, I mean, I guess the only thing I would say, you know, Cody, is that you, um, there, there's no real line in, in helping them write the grant. You know, that's what we're a public we're a public, you know, body. And so everything that we do and say is in, is in public. That's why we had to go through the open meeting law training. So, so none of us have any secret information. So, you know, you can be useful to your, you know, to your, 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 you know, your partners uh, in the, in the writing process of the grant, especially in terms of budgeting things out and, and all that. Um, because, you know, that's, that's not a, that's not a, that's, that's not an advantage that, you know, there's no special advantage there because anybody, that information is free to anybody. Um, it's, it's on the flip side when it comes to the deliberations. Um, and you, you know, really the, the, the concern is that, you know, you, 
like if you yourself were getting paid like that's you know that's the bottom line sort of ethical concern you know we if 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 toby was going to do an actual piece and he was going to pay himself for that work he could do that in an application but he couldn't also contribute to that decision um and so you know it's it's it, it's happened several times last year where you know literally somebody who I, in one case we had a member who was just a very close friend of a grantee and she was like look you know i just I, i'm biased because i love my friend and you know and, and and so she recused herself and um and so i think it's it's at that time it's a, it's a very straightforward thing where you know you just might turn off your video and your audio and just watch the deliberation like a member of the public um and and you know you'll still be a part of larger discussions where that grant amount is a big piece of the puzzle of all the grant amounts and and that's okay but you know the the main goal here is that you know if you have a vested interest in your project you know you shouldn't be also making the decision about whether that project gets funded or not um and and you know i think when you when you see how it kind of plays out it's a pretty organic process and you know we're always like we're always just checking each other and and you know we're happy to talk to you in advance if you're if you're concerned about something um but the easiest thing i think is that when your particular project comes up you just turn off the video turn off your you know your microphone and and just watch like a member of the public and then you just pop right back in and and uh, it's usually pretty smooth um, you're on. Thank you. sure Robin, we, we jumped around a little bit. We just wanted to see if um, we talked about the public info sessions and now we just want to see if Toby or Cody or Eleanor had any, you know, just kind of broader process questions or or anything really. I feel like I had, I just had a curiosity. Um, I know we, you kind of mentioned you'd be like, oh, some cultural councils are more like event based than others, if that makes sense. Like they, you know, focus on more of that aspect. And I was just wondering if that's um, something that we try to do, or if we talk about that or all over, or just if that plays a role um, in stuff here. Yeah, I well, and I'll, I'll defer this to Julianne in a second because she's actually been a little bit more in, involved on that end. But I actually think that our October meeting before we start doing deliberations, I really think we should talk, we should give it some time to talk about if if we wanna do a local council activity and what we wanna do, because we do have, a, we can actually use, we wouldn't usually use this much, but we could use up to 20% of our funds on an event or a local activity. So I, I think, you know, especially um, with with the number of new members we have and stuff, like I think let's, let's definitely maybe plan to talk about that at that October meeting in depth, because um, really, you know, it's, it is sort of at the, it's at the discretion of, of the members, you know, if it, like Julianne has been really um, passionate about the Pecha Kucha project, which is a really cool international thing, um, has taken the lead on that. And, and I think so, so if I, it's, it's organic, but it really does, it's it just starts with you or starts with us, you know. Yeah, I, I would add that that's one of the reasons I joined the Cultural Council is I really wanted to see more engagement and more community opportunities for people who are creative to to gather and to share ideas. And uh, we were all teed up with a slate of artists for this Pecha Kucha night, which um, I can send everyone a, a link for it and, and what it is. But it's basically these fast presentations. You show 20 images in less than seven minutes and you talk about your work. And um, I had participated one in an, another place where I had lived. And then we were, we had one scheduled for, I think it was March 12th, 2020. Oh, and yeah, and at that me. point, you know, the universities said, okay, we're right around then. It was either right before or after they said, we're sending all the students home. What was and that we, day? We, that, it was like, yeah, it was like that day. And yeah. we, we um we we literally called it off like the day before all of the artists had all of their presentations ready so yeah. you know there's there's a desire to do this but you know while the while the pandemic has changed we're not out of it so that yeah. that's really been something that has has changed the work we do dramatically um but yeah i i agree we should talk about it in october and and see where we are and maybe, maybe it is time that we could pick that or something else back up and and support the community in an engaging way uh, that'd be great i'm glad you asked 
Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you for talking about that. I, I would be really excited um, to talk more about that and just about ways that, you know, same as you're saying, we can get community engagement around art. Absolutely. Great. Julianne, with the Pechicucha, um, no it's definitely in person, right? You know, there are groups that, that went online with it, but at, at the time when, when we considered it, one, we didn't have a following. So we would have had to have built a following for an online event. And two, we had so many grantees moving their events online that we didn't want to necessarily compete with it. And, you know, we, we just have put it on hold. I, I feel strongly about it as an in-person event to really benefit people. So maybe it could have gone virtual, but um, I, I guess I wasn't particularly excited about it as, as just an additional virtual event with a bunch of virtual events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I understand. I'm, and the reason I'm asking is that um, this is now like two years later, more than two, two and a half years later. Yeah. Um, so assuming we do, do one in person, is this something, I mean, we don't need to talk about it now, but I was just curious whether we would still try to re-engage all the original artists or are you open to revisiting you know, the format or the participants? We actually tried to do a reboot of, to, to actually, to, uh, that would have been scheduled for about this time last year. And we did go back to the original artist and some of them were able to come back and some of the others weren't. You know, it's, it's certainly a very appropriate gesture you know, since since they did the work to put presentations together to contact them. But uh, my experience would be that if we did, some of them would participate, some of them wouldn't. So it, it would, and many of the folks that were going to participate on the second attempt said, that's great, but I'm going to do a whole new thing. So it's even worse. They've actually done their two different presentations in some cases that have not made it because of this crazy thing. So good question. Thank you. So I want to pause and say welcome to Leah as well. Um, great to mm -hmm. see you. You can hear us. Sorry, my work ran super late. I teach dance and it just gets hectic and all the parents and students are just like having questions afterwards on like the first week. So it ran way later than I thought it would. But no, no are you guys at quorum? Well, yeah, we, so we've had five because we're all voting members. So we've had five. So we've been in good shape and um, we did approve our minutes. Uh, there, there's a couple, there's one other fairly quick, I think, action item, and then two things that probably will take some, some discussion. So if it's okay with others, I think I'll move us, I'd like to move us over to the Davis, um, Bates, uh, grant request, uh, extension okay. request. Um, this one is, and, and for the new folks, just so you know, uh, the past couple of years, we spent a, an inordinate amount of time approving requests for people to reschedule their uh, activities, their events and stuff, mostly due to pandemic related stuff. Um, and interestingly, in this coming cycle, uh, we'll be able to just approve extension requests um, just with two members of the council. Doesn't even have to be chairs or whatever. Just That's any two members of the council that. can just okay. say it. That's what that section was. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, so, so I, I think- good. Yeah, I, I think that's something that the MCC re recognized how much of a burden of time. It also, you know, it's kind of rough on a grantee. If they want to reschedule, they've got a good idea, and the council isn't going to meet for another month or two, they got to sit on their hands or, or, you know, plan something that might not get approved. So I'm grateful for the, for the to the state for making that decision. And that being said, I, <laughs> I can, I will cautiously hope that this is our last um, extension request that we have to have a you know a roll call vote to approve, um, but but in short you know Davis struggled to get um, uptake on his on his project uh, as it was originally conceived, working with the town's leisure, leisure services, and you know he reached out. There's a, he and I have an email chain that goes back years at this like multiple years at this point, and and it's been you know good faith efforts on his part to make it happen. Um, yeah. And so, you know, he reached out and he said, look, I'm kind of at the end of my rope. Like, can I just cut bait? And, and, you know, I said, well, if I think the council would approve an amendment request if you wanted to try a different venue, a different time, you know, would likely approve a, a request. And so he turned around in like 24 hours and got a um, letter of support from, I believe it's the senior center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, senior center. Yeah. Really? And, 
so and I, as I gather, he's a he's he's been a multiple you know multiple awardee of ours, and and certainly has been a good faith actor for us. So you know, happy to open for discussion or just to take a motion if if nobody has any concerns. I'll, I don't know if I'm a second or a first <laughs> motion to okay then to approve his request. He's been he's really worked on this. He's been really worked in, in good faith and keeps trying. Yeah. I'll, I'll second it I because I, I have to second it. I just I put in a lot of time with, with this gentleman. Um, <laughs> so, so I'll take the second. Um, and then I'll just do the the Hollywood Squares game here. Um, Leah? I approve. Eleanor? I approve. Cody? It's so very Kobe. So, yeah, I am. Okay. Um, Toby? You don't have any light either. I, I approve. Rachel? Yes. And Julianne? Yes. We are unanimous. He will be thrilled. And I really hope that it just it happens this time and we <laughs> put this one to bed. Um, so, and one thing I will share with folks, you know, is is if you've been poking around the mass the MCC website, you will see that you know the state appropriation has come to us. Um, I actually didn't compare it to previous years. It's I think it's fifty three thousand. Oh, fifty three something, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the appropriation that we know we have. Um, you know, the town accounts that that number will go up slightly based on how much money we're we're rolling over from previous years and stuff. It'll go so. up significantly, actually. Yeah, I think it, I think so too. So yeah, Holly and I are so, working on it. What what we'll do at the beginning of our granting process is we'll um, yeah. we'll, you know, we we as a council will have an actual amount that you know that comes out of the town's bank account, and Robin will sort of help us make that happen. Um, so we'll have an actual amount, and then because it's really important that we have a bottom line amount so that we can deliberate and and you know allocate the funds according to that. So. Um, things like this, where we can get Davis committed and, and moving forward, you know, now we can hopefully assume that we won't have to re uh, repurpose his funds. So that's, you know, it, it always feels better to spend the money now on the project that's come forward than as opposed to, you know, rolling it into a future year or, or years. Um, Okay, so I actually think that we should we should try to do the officers next, unless unless anybody objects. Just I think um, I know Chrissy's trying to make it, but she's running a little late, and it's twenty till seven already. Um, the only other kind of voting item that we have is the Amherst Media piece, um, which and that 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 does require some discussion. But um, I think the officer thing we we need to get to kind of get that vote um, done. So. Um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of open it up for, for discussion and comment, I guess. Do you and Julian no. want to nominate yourselves or do you want somebody to nominate <laughs> you? Do they just reelect or? Yeah, I mean, I, I will just say that, you know, I, I felt, I felt a little, um, you know, it's like, I mean, we're not trying to steamroll this process or anything by any means. And if somebody else really feels like they have the energy and and go get you to step up and, and do this thing, like you know, I think that's we we'd welcome that. Um, we'd welcome that discussion. Uh, I will say that you know it's it's pretty unconventional for like the co-chair model, you know, talking to folks in the town and other boards. And you know, we've had we've had some bumps with it early, but I really think, you know, at this point we're in a pretty. I, I won't speak for you, Julian, but you know, at, at this point I think we're in a pretty good place in terms of um, having complementary skills so that we can sort of, you know, help the council move forward. And, um, you know, so I, I, I would be happy to, to, you know, put myself forward as a, or, or take a nominee. I, maybe it's more appropriate to have a nomination. I don't know. But, um, but I personally would be happy to continue to do it. Uh, so I guess that's my, my thought. Yeah, you seem like you know what you do so I will definitely you.
Thank you. Julianne, what do you think? Um, I, I, I agree with Matt, you know, as far as the, the, the co-chair model, you know, we, we had a lot of changes with the direct granting last year. And, and again, we have a lot of new members and, um, and, and yet I think it, we, while we've had some bumps that we, we are making it work. And I think one important thing for everyone just to know is I think Robin can maybe speak to this better. We have in general, you know, perhaps more money than surrounding towns, um, that we're able to to award, and and with that we have more applicants and more questions. And um, you know, I the only reason that I'm co-chair is that Matt, you know, I guess there was there was a, a nomination, and and Matt reached out and asked if I would co-chair. And having been through this, uh, as amazing as Matt is, you know, I know for myself, there's no way that I could I could chair on my own. It's, it's, it would just be too much time. And uh, Matt, Matt does more of the work than I, I do. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think, Matt, there's, there's some value in having some support and not having to go at all, you know, on your own. And, you know, if you, if you look to Gigi, who was um, chair before, and, and she and Jenny, I think, worked together similarly. Now, Gigi was, you know, retired but putting a book out you know her schedule was more flexible um you know i think it would be hard to have a full-time job and take on chairing all, all by oneself and and i i really appreciate you know the the group effort and i've appreciated working with 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 robin and i've appreciated how you know everyone pitches in rachel has pitched in and provided additional support with um, different kinds of documents and tracking that we're, we're doing. So I, I certainly would be happy to, to continue. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a pretty big effort. And, uh, and I, I'm happy to continue taking care of this. But as Matt said, if anyone feels strongly that they'd like to step forward, uh, you know, it's, it's not that I have to do this. And I would, I would be happy, you know, to support someone else in this role. Um, if, if somebody felt like this was their time, but uh, it, it's wonderful to work with you all, however we do so. So I have to confess to being the person who nominated you as co-chair, Julianne, because you weren't in the meeting. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't in the meeting. That was one of the you people. Were. Thank you. I don't think I was either, but, um, but I think, sorry, I'm just going to kind of provide my two cents is that I think you two have complementary strengths. And I think it is a lot of work for somebody who, for anyone, you know, whether or not you have a, another job and a life outside of this. And I, this is for the group to kind of deliberate is that um, if we go ahead with voting the two of you in as co-chairs, I personally would like to see you take turns running meetings and you know so we get kind of have a different exposure to to different styles of leadership and i don't know if, if you all are doing it you and matt are doing this this way because you've already decided this is how you want to manage the situation so i'm just kind of raising that as an idea whether you know um you would consider that so like take turns running the meetings and and I don't know in terms of like communications with, especially the applicants, I imagine you get a lot of those. And um, my, I, I was gonna ask if it would make sense, for example, if I'm talking to somebody who's interested in applying and have would have specific questions that <clears throat> the chair or treasurer would be in a position to respond to, I would just say, email these people in a group email and they can decide who's gonna respond and who's gonna follow up. And then it's not like, you know, you have to go tell Matt or Matt has to tell you or tell Robin, whatever. So that was just gonna, that's just, that, that's kind of a detail. But I mean, it's it's also like in terms of management is, is you know, is that something um, you think would be effective? So I am just stating my support for Julian and Matt to continue co-chairing and, um, you know, maybe look at how the meetings can run in the future and, and just along those notes, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be the secretary, but I will happily take notes in turn if people are, you know, open to that. 
I, I'd like to respond. Thank you. And all points noted, uh, the email correspondence, that, that is exactly how we're doing it. Uh, if, if an email comes into one of us individually, we would, we would add the other on, on copy. Um, and so, so we're always both in the loop. Um, as I said, Matt often, you know, tends to, to do, do more than I do as far as I don't, I don't know how you do it, Matt, but certainly, <laughs> you know, if there's an email and I'm, I've noticed that, it, that, you know, it's not responded to, which, you know, then, then I'll respond to it, but often Matt gets to them bef before me, uh, but we're always both on, on copy and, um, it, it's a lot of volume to to go through. So I think I think that's working. Matt and I have have discussed, you know, uh, trading off running meetings, and you know we can we can certainly do that. On the other hand, Matt is so damn organized. <laughs> You know, and I, I'm more creative and, and a little bit of a free spirit and I wing things. So we might go off track a little more. And, you know, the, the other limitation I have is that the later the meetings get and the longer they run, because I have narcolepsy, there are just some times when, you know, in these evening meetings, I am not at my absolute best. So um, one of the factors I've looked at for running a meeting is, you know, the earlier they would be, the 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 better I could guarantee that I would be in a good shape to participate. So, uh, but you know, it's something that that we certainly can can try, and uh, and you know, I, I appreciate all that you've you've done, Matt. Um, and really, just I can't hold a candle to your level of order and organization. Well, thank you. It's Funny because I never, I never really thought of myself as that kind of person, but um, I'm just having as organized. Oh my god! <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I I'm uh, organized, but you're organized. Well, thank you. That's, I take that as a compliment. Um, well, we'll see what happens two months from now when you haven't slept. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that is something that I just I want to say that you know I, I've like I said I, I do think that Julianne and I have good complementary um, traits, and that helps you know that benefits the council, and that's really the whole point. Um, but I also, yeah, you know, having a young, young, another young child now under the age of zero, basically. Um, and then also, you know, I just have a, I have a lot of other commitments as well, like between work and, and the town finance and, and things like that. So Julian and I have already talked about this, this coming year, you know, particularly in the deliberation meetings, it may, it may be that I have to miss some of them just based on other commitments. And that really, it makes me feel more comfortable knowing that she's, you know, she's there and, and vice versa, I assume, so that we can, you know, like the whole thing doesn't hinge on us being sitting at our desk at 6 p.m., you know, on a, on a given Thursday night, so. so, so someone, I guess I would, yeah. I would yeah. say there are LCCs who do use co-models, and there are also ones who, um, like, rotate secretarial duties, um, and maybe some other things it's not unheard of because we do have, and we have one of the higher intensity workloads of the LCCs overall. And then of the ones that are all volunteer, we're probably up there, which I had not realized until direct ranting. And it was also, I'd only done it one year, um, which is, this is a lot of work for, for volunteers volunteers and volunteers are like counted on to reduce costs of organizations and governments and it's a whole other thing but it, it really shouldn't the intensity of the load should not be on volunteers not that we can do anything about it right now but it's it's a lot saying that i would not mind someone <laughs> coming in either helping assisting co and being trained or not at certain points of it so I'm not quite sure how to I'd have to figure out how to do that and I'm in theory only on for another year so yeah. we will I'd, I'd like to pick up here Robin and say that as a matter of fact we're looking to all of you to be officers you know in in, in some fashion as far as you know people rotate off the council so there, there is an opportunity for everyone at some point. You know, it'd be very difficult, you know, to come in your first year, you know, and and 
and share because there is a lot to know and we learn from the best you know Gigi and Jenny you know we're really fortunate to to have had uh, the time that we had with them and we hope that we'll we will benefit you as well uh, but we are very much in need um, of someone to to start to learn the ropes as treasurer um, because we we do lose Robin in in, in a year and it, it is going to take you know, pretty much an entire uh -huh. grant cycle yeah. um, to, to kind of learn how this is, is done. Um, and it's it's getting streamlined with the direct granting. Right. So, uh, but th this is an area where someone who is new can be uh, very effective. And yet at the same time, you wouldn't be accountable, you know, for every last detail. Um, and I tend to work pretty closely with Robin on signing off on all the forms and everything because it's just been easier for us to coordinate our schedules because I'm in Amherst and you are in Mets. Um, well, so don't yeah. have regular yeah. nine to five jobs. So. Yeah. So I, you know, I have a, a a pretty decent understanding of it, but certainly not Robin's understanding. So this this is something that we would very much like someone to step forward and. Um, assist with and and with the un intent to um you know if everything comes together next year own this going forward um, um, yeah. um, um, um walk over and help me like you're not busy enough cody to myself or if but uh, respect my own obligations or is coming a very hot season I can't guarantee especially Nice to be available. So yeah, we just down the hill a little. So uh, if, no, if that's you, that's a shame. But mind, I know your hockey season. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's if, if you don't mind, I'd like to just kind of bring us back to. We want to do. Let's let's actually get a, an election, a vote on the chair, a vote on the um, treasurer. We can talk about it. You know, if anybody is willing to kind of serve as a co-treasurer, apprentice treasurer. Um, and then the secretary, I, per, personally, I do like to have a, a secretary mm -hmm. because I, I find that if the more I do the notes, that the easier and faster it comes. But as Rachel and Robin both said, it's frequently that, that it becomes a rotating thing. And if we have to rotate it, that's okay. I would just try to get a schedule done in advance so that we're not trying to figure that out before each meeting. That's That could be quite time consuming. But, um, I, I would say we, with, with, with the secretary, I, I would prefer that that we elect one person but with the understanding that it is flexible and if they cannot attend someone else obviously we'll we'll pick it up but i, I would like to have a dedicated officer uh i think right. we have to do or something i think we might have to yeah that, that so i'm fine with with rotating as as we need but i think it is good to set the expectation that we have one person and yeah I, I like that, that idea too. Yeah, but is uh, the secretary just taking meeting notes? Basically, yeah. I I feel like I'm able to attend a good amount of meetings, like most of them during the grant cycle. So I would be willing to do that, but not if someone else really wants to do that. Well, I'll nominate Leah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll second them. <laughs> yeah, I just. Thank you. I'll look at some notes from last year because I know they have to be specific. Like Thank you for, for putting your hand up to, to do that. Um, what I was going to also propose is, first of all, Matt and Julia, I think I think I thanked you when I was you know, supporting your co-candidacy again. But if I haven't, thank you both very much. And thank you also to Robin for all that you do. And, um, you know, part of like, I totally agree with you that the officers can and ought to be supporting different functions. So I think maybe like for US co-chairs, 
is to work out specific functions where you think you can delegate out to different people, right? We don't have to have titles per se, but it's like, for example, we had the subcommittees, right? Doing different tasks. So that would be really helpful from a management and delegation standpoint. So and I, have an idea. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that, Robert, uh, Rachel. I think that's a good, that's a good point. And that, that is one reason I like the subcommittees, honestly, is, you know, I feel like if you're not an officer, sometimes it can feel like you just show up and go with the, you know, go with the flow and, and it does give folks a chance to do things. And like Eleanor is asking about local um, activities, that's another place where, you know, a member who's not an officer in a given year can, can you know, actually have some action steps to, to carry through between meetings. Um, I, I actually have an idea since I'm starting to see the shape of things come out, like, you know, in a, in a fairly organic fashion. Um, I would say that, you know, if, if anybody wants to potentially, you know, throw their hat in as a, an apprentice treasurer, and, and I want to say it's, you're not a hundred percent committed to doing it next year whatsoever. You know, if nothing else, Robin, we could just use the help in terms of processing the well, grant. What I was going to say is that as treasurer, I've really got a much better idea of who's out there, what's out there, what's going on, who's doing it. And a lot of people, you know, send in a note saying, oh, blah, 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 do you need this? And I get back to them and then they send another note and we kind of know each other a little bit. Um, people send in thank you notes. I mean, it's very, it's very nice on that level. It's just a lot of work, but we were also between both set, both kinds of, granting and COVID and working out the kinks and not, you know, not knowing how it's going to work out. So I think it'll be better, but yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to just assist the apprentice, come in to do it in the future, all of that, and you would get a good idea of what's going on. I think someone who, especially who could help with kind of the, the online, you know, keeping, you know, an Excel doc or, you know, uh, just all of that recording for reports and stuff, that would be really helpful if someone could help with that. So, just... it's, it's tough. We've got a bunch of creative people and, you know, I, I'll tell any group that I'm the last person that you want, you know, as, as a bookkeeper or treasurer. <laughs> So well, I count on you to like double check it, which probably why I'm not as meticulous as I would be because I know you're going to yeah, look at it. Yeah, I, you I, have quite a couple of things. So yeah, I'm pretty good at, at double checking, but you know, nowhere ever am I <laughs> going to be bookkeeper. But uh, it's it it's a pretty manageable process, but you know, it it does have some some day to day involvement. So if uh, somebody could apprentice, that would be fantastic. I don't know like what um, my is going to be next year. So I don't think I can, but yeah, no, I think, I think we, uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you applying to colleges? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You need to yeah. concentrate on that. <laughs> yeah. That's like the paperwork and stuff mm -hmm. I'm doing. So, um, you know, we know we want to have sort of officers and this is a position that it's going to be important to us, um, but it doesn't need to be an elected position tonight. I think it's going to be a, a conversation that we can let unfold for a little bit longer. Um, you know, I, I think the main thing we would want to see is that there be somebody to help uh, hit the ground running with the FY24 grant. Uh, yeah, FY24 <laughs> grants that are coming up, you know, this next round. So I think maybe this is a conversation that we just need to keep yeah. keep having. And, and you know, as folks, I mean, I, I, I appreciate, you know, Toby, Cody, and Eleanor and being like, this is my first meeting, second meeting. I'm not, you know, like oh, so. Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't come running into the treasurer type thing, oh. either, you know, on my first couple of meetings. But, but as as things go along, I, I think you will see that, um, you know, the actual the actual cash that that you know goes out really does represent, you know, the the essence of what we do. It's it's to distribute cash, and so um, although it is, as Julian said, doesn't feel like the most creative thing in the world, it really is the essence of of our work and it's what people come to us for, honestly. I mean, so it's, it is nice. And I, I agree, I, I find that Robin has a better sense of who did their, who actually did their project, when it was gonna happen, when it was supposed to happen. 
than anybody because she's the one who has to look at the receipts and, and sort of sign off on it. Um, and then the other piece of, of which I'm really interested in is like uh, the tracking part of it allowed me this year, I literally had a spreadsheet where I had the dates of everything that we funded in a column and a spreadsheet. And then I like wrote those down and then I went to it all, like, or not all of it, but I went to a lot of the stuff that we funded. And so, you know, being close to the actual, to the action, let me actually, you know, participate in more of the art. So, you know, and I had a personal that matter. Here, so I can track yeah. on what's as well. So. But I, I'd like to make a proposal that we um, vote on the slate, if that's okay. Cause I think we, you know, I don't uh, and just kind of vote on the slate. Cause I don't think we have any competing, um, parties right now and, and just sort of, you know, put that out there as as with the co-chairs, the secretary and, and Leah, by the way, thank you for stepping up. And I just want you to know that every other secretary, if somebody's not going to be there, just put out the call and say, hey, can somebody else cover the cover the minutes? It's really not a big deal. Um, so so I, we appreciate you doing that. And I, um, I, I agree with Julianne. It's important to have somebody named. And then and then Robin, we assume you're um, open to another term as, as treasurer. Yeah. Rachel? Um, yeah, and I've already told you what the tweaks are and you guys we can figure out how to do that best organizationally. And I, think it be. I was Go gonna ahead, say, Rachel. people were, oh wait, is Rachel saying something? Leah, go ahead and finish and then I'll talk, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, Rachel, you were talking a little bit about how important the subcommittees were. And I know now that um, I know like last year and like the year before that and the year before that, Julianne did so much of the head work with the Pecha Kucha. And now like you're also a co-chair. That's also so much work. If we wanted to create a like Pecha Kucha subcommittee and kind of divvy up some of that like event production, that's something that I take pleasure in because like to like work on something and then get to go, it's so lovely. And I'd want to be part of that, if that would take some load off of That'd be wonderful. Yeah, that sounds great to have basically like project teams. Yeah. Subcommittee sounds, I mean, maybe for me, just a fraught term in terms of like, it's just things to get more bogged down. But, but yeah, so we could give like a good name to subcommittee. So that's a great idea. I was just gonna say that, um, Robin, I'm cycling out, I think the same time as you. Um, oh. Well, my first one was really short, so people say, well, you could do another one. That's the whole thing. I finished this in 2023. Um, I was going to offer, I, I don't want to be a treasurer in training. I've, I've run businesses before, but I'm happy to help you. <laughs> okay. With, I'm with, um, and you also just have to drink, so. In the coming months. And, you know, maybe in a similar way when I help kind of set up the, um, the granting scoring um, system, I can help maybe put some kind of, um, you know, just templates in place for whoever's going to take over as treasurer after you. So if that would be useful, Robin, I can talk to you or talk to the co-chairs after the meeting, but, you yeah. know, just not putting my name on the slate or anything. It's, so I'm just offering um, some support and assistance. Right. Cody. Figure out a way. Uh, I have a question. Does the impetus have to every week? And so, and you know, I'm good at Google Sheets. So, that's something I and that's and throughout the day in between stuff. So that's only willing to at least help and have time to think about do I want the full or raw attention? That's, 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 that would be really helpful, Cody. And I think that makes a ton of sense. You know, if, if, if that's a skill of set of yours, I definitely think that that would help, you know, because one of the big shifts with the direct granting is 
how much needs to be kept straight at one time. It's not, it's, it's much less of a trickle. It's more of a flood. <laughs> and, well, and then there's trickles. And then there's a trickle, right? That's right. But it's, you know, we, we didn't have this immediate flood that we have this, this time. And so, yeah, I mean, if, if you're comfortable with spreadsheets and, and doing that kind of thing, and really, I mean, in my book, if I have a lot of paper and I have somebody else to say, well, you know, check this one off this date, like that, that would be really helpful to us. So um, I, I would be appreciative of that. And I would also want to say, Rachel, thank you for, you know, volunteering to help out and, and be a part of it too. Um, and I don't, I don't think we're looking necessarily at an official spot here for, for the, you know, um, treasurer support. So, so I think we, as long as we know that we have some folks who are willing to, you know, step up and, and help Robin through the process, that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah. I'm just so so grateful for both of you offering to help and what I'm seeing to come coming together here is Rachel, especially the way you put it, that uh, although you'll be rotating out that you could use your business experience and mindset to look at this as far as how can we get it to a point right. where it's a process and it can be handed off right. and that we have a lot of clarity about you know, the, the, the process and handoffs in a way that, um, that maybe we're not in a position where we're looking for someone to train for a year, you know, that if we could get it cleaned up like that and, uh, and certainly, you know, with, with Cody helping and learning the ropes as well, that's a, that's a winning combination. Uh, so I, I think we've got a, a good way to go forward and appreciate all of you. So does anybody want to make a motion on kind of the slate that we have in front of us now? Sure, I'll make the motion because y'all who are on the slate can't make a motion, can you? I don't think so. I think right. you can vote, so, probably not, best not to. <laughs> so Eleanor or Toby needs a second. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, I second that motion. <laughs> okay. Yes. We have a third, that's great. And then we can, I think we all vote. So um, I'll just do the roll call. Uh, Leah. Um, I approve. Uh, Robin. Yes. Um, Cody. Uh, hmm. Rachel. Oh, did you make the motion? I'm sorry, you made the motion, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Um, Julianne. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Um, did we hear from Toby? Yes. He, I think he did, yeah. Or maybe he, he may have thirded the motion, which I, I took to be a yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and Christy, you know, I, I'm here. Christy got tied up and is not able to be here. But but Christy um, Anderson is a returning member too. And and um, so I think I, I'm excited. I really think we have a great uh, group here. You know, I really do. And I'm excited about this, this cycle. And now I think we get to have a, a I know it's seven, 11 let's aim to get out of here by 7 30 uh, if that works for folks we actually have i think a pretty interesting meaty semi pseudo creative discussion now uh in front of us and i will give a very very brief introduction to what this is um, essentially i mentioned at the beginning that we can use up to 20 percent of our all allocation towards local projects and this current year um our main well our, the the local project we have a we had a local project um, called an accessibility roundtable and that was sort of the culmination of a year and a half two years of work on accessibility um, specifically disability related accessibility but we also really worked to try to broaden that into you know um, you know racial socioeconomic geographic like we did try to make a broader version of accessibility than than solely disability, but we did start with, with disability and that's been sort of the center of it for most of the time. Um, and so anyway, we put we put some money aside as a local council pro, uh, program towards an accessibility round table. And this was gonna be something we were gonna do in the fall. Um, and then things kind of happened really quickly where Charles Baldwin, who is the uh, program representative from MCC who focuses in on accessibility he said, well, yeah, I'll come do a thing with you guys. And then we wound up doing a really fun um, discussion with Charles, which is posted on our website around accessibility for cultural councils, essentially grants, cultural you know, entities. 
And so we, we did it. It didn't cost us any money and it's on our website. And we, in fact, point our applicants back to it in this current application process. So on some level, we can just say, check, you know, we, we, we did what we said we were going to do, um, but we do still have the funds set aside to fund this round table that we had, that we had intended. And uh, Julianne, well, Leah originally, you know, had started a relationship with Amherst Media relating to another piece of our work. And Julianne had picked up that conversation with them. And they had essentially said, that, look, I should take a step back. They, Amherst Media, which is our local access TV station, um, they basically said to Julianne, you know, we can do an accessibility thing for you. Like we can do, we can do what you're talking about. We can go, we can take cameras. We can go out to talk to some of your members, some of your grantees, go back to Charles Baldwin with the state and help you put together a little, uh, an accessibility round table that becomes, you know, essentially a, a show, like a, you know, a short, a short videotape segment on accessibility in the arts. Um, the other important piece of context is that uh, Am Amherst Media actually came in with a grant request for this in this last round. And none of us really knew what it was um, because we, had, we hadn't we had really talked to them in advance. And so we didn't decline to fund them, but we funded them. They, they asked for 2,500, we funded them for 250, like 250, because we appreciated the spirit of things and we wanted to indicate support, but we also had no idea what they were talking about. And, and really it wasn't anything that had sort of been established yet. So Julianne did this, had these conversations and, and sort of got to the point where they said, well, we'll make a proposal to you, um, you know, to do your accessibility roundtable. So, so it's not a grant. It's something that we are collectively talking about potentially funding um, with them as our partner. And the, the, fun, the, the funds would go to, you know, pay their staff who would do the AV production and, and everything else. Um, and so that is, that's kind of the thing on the table right now is, is that letter that I shared and does anybody want me to share my screen if you didn't have a chance to look at the Amherst Media letter? Um, I'd be happy to kind of pull it up just so we have. Yes, please. Anything? I would love that. Okay. Yeah, I just yeah. thought it might be helpful. Um, would it be like one round table that's recorded or are they thinking like recording different people like on location and then putting it together in a net? So it's it's sort of a mini documentary is what I would, is what yeah. I would call it. Three to five minutes in length, um, focusing on accessibility. You know, you can you can see they. I'll, I'll give just folks a, a chance to read this rather than. Hey, Christy. I will admit, when as I told me, five hundred and five was bit much. Because they don't really say why it's that much unless they want to promote it on a Facebook, which does require much. But they don't say that. So I agree with 250. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair point. Um, Rachel. Yeah, okay. My question is yes, I, I understand the. Um, proposal and the spirit of it. And I guess I am curious as to the individuals making this 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 documentary and how many of them actually have experience with this with either accessibility or disability. Because the perspective could be very different depending on I was also going to point out that to interview five to seven artists and then cut it down to three to five minutes is i think that's a pretty big cut yeah my honestly, i could be wrong is 
wonderful idea to somehow offer stipends to those who did but I would not say big. Julian? I think you're muted, Julianne. Yeah. <laughs> I was muted. I, I'm not sure I completely understood your question. I, I want to come back to that. If you're asking about would this fund stipends for the artist in, in the video? And uh, yeah. I, I'm, I was uh, just waiting for everyone to pause and read the letter. And then um, I had wanted to present a little bit more context since I've had the the conversations with Amher Amherst Media and how how this has come about. So uh, let's let let me just give a little more context and then we can get get back to the questions. So we're we're kind of looking at as far as accessibility. We're asking our grantees now. It's it's a, a requirement on the grant applications for them to accommodate. Um, people to participate in the events beyond ADA um, uh, requirements that we had previously that just were, you know, it had to be in a building that was handicap accessible. And during the pandemic, you know, we, we found that uh, it really, uh, it, it shined a light on the number of ways that people can't access arts, culture, education. And, and it's not as simple as just, you know, people who can physically walk into a building and attend. And uh, so what we're asking people to do, and in some cases, you know, it's okay, yes, they can walk in, but you, you should have a sign language interpreter. Um, or uh, work that would, uh, for, for people who, who can't see, you know, when they go to an art gallery and there are paintings, how, how can they experience what the content is in the painting? So this piece that we're looking at, at doing with Amherst Media comes out of the round table as far as kind of being a mini documentary or public service announcement to raise awareness and and to help inspire people to learn more and to know what resources are available and and just to think think differently and to think from other people's perspectives right so and can this be put out there in a way that engages with the community more so than honestly the preaching to the choir type thing the people who are going to come to an accessibility roundtable are really invested in doing this now how can we push the message out there to raise awareness where you know people aren't so engaged that they're going to come do an hour or hour and a half session with us so this kind of evolved organically because yes amherst media put in a a, a grant application last year and while well, it sounded great, we weren't, we didn't know how we would be involved. So now we're kind of circling back and saying, well, we do have these funds. And the way I see it, this wouldn't just benefit the Amherst community. I, I think there's uh, a possibility that it would be used throughout the Commonwealth, you know, especially if we got Charles Baldwin involved in, um, and, and went back to the MCC and that perhaps they might send it out to all the LCCs if we do something great. So uh, I, I just think if this is our mission to raise awareness and to help people figure this out and, and to gather as a community in a more inclusive way, that, that there's some value here and we have an opportunity and that maybe we can deliver kind of a, something that, that seeds um, culture in, in a way that helps. Uh, yes, uh, Cody, before you go, I just want to um, uh, welcome Christy, make yes, sure she can and, and introduce her because we have several new members who, who may not have seen, but, but this is Christy Anderson. I just want to say 
Welcome. So glad you could come, Christy. I'm terribly so I'm sorry. I was stuck in traffic out of Boston for hours. Oh, we should have so, together. Apologies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are now complete. Yeah, we're yeah, we're all here. We, we are Avengers assembled and we we did do our officer election, Chris uh Christy, and and we're all here together. And this is gonna be our group for the for the fall. So I just want to take a moment and celebrate that because you know. Over the course of the year, it's not frequent that we have all 100%, you know, in attendance. So it's just a nice moment to have. Uh, Cody had a couple more questions. Cody, I wanted to make uh, one one quick response to your initial questions, though, um, and just a, a, a slight a slight shift in sort of um, this is this is this will be our project. So this is not them coming to to us for money so that they can go do something. This is oh. us. This is almost us contracting with them. Well, it's not, this is us contracting with them to to do this for us. And so, you know, doing it with a munis a nonprofit municipal who does have paid employees, you know, for me that that does feel good as a resident to you know to continue to build a, a partnership with a frankly a struggling you know nonprofit municipal who is an important part of the creative, arguably you know the creative scene. I I, I personally think that they're really important. Um, and uh, so, but I think you're, cause you were asking very, the kind of questions we would ask of a, of a grantee who's coming to us for funds and we'd be pretty rigorous with their budget and things like that. I think this is one of these things where if there are areas that we're not comfortable with, you know, in the proposal as presented, we, and, and really Julianne would sort of go back to them with additional follow-up questions or terms or conditions and, you know, kind of move the conversation along that way. We could also say, no, we don't want to do it. It's a waste of money. We don't want to do that's that's definitely on the on the table too, um, but I just want to put that frame out there because I you know I think it's helpful. Gotcha. I want to just go say I totally agree the best fit might be for the whole state. I know I, I presented to a group actually that Charles was part of him. So, you know, I would, um, I mean, obviously we can continue to discuss, I guess I would, I would say, we, you know, we could, we could entertain a motion, you know, something along the lines of, um, you know, to go ahead, Toby, please. Yeah. No, um, I have a, I have a child with a uh, disability and I know that, um, you know, I didn't learn about ableism until, you know, until it's, until it's, you know, somebody that you know are close. And I know that the, the people surrounding my child always need the most uh, because they're always under, you know, the, the paras and, and all these people. It, it's, you start to see like um, most people that are surrounding my child, my, most people surrounded by my child are underfunded so yeah i i feel like um and with the whole visibility thing uh absolutely um thumbs up yeah yeah no, that's great that's great and I, and I do think that um further work we do on this on this topic you know we can definitely engage the school systems more explicitly um on that you know i think they that is probably where you have the most concentrated energy around, you know, disability supports. And I don't just say that because I'm a special education director. I also, you know, I also think it's true in any community that is where you'll see, you know, the the, the biggest concentration of those supports. Um, and, and in fact, we could, you know, so that's a good example of something we could ask Amherst Media to do is to include some representative of the school system or of the student body, you know, however you want to take it in, in this. I think that'd be 
a worthwhile thing to do. Um, just is bounce off of that. I do know this is frequent uh, about disability history that I wonder if we can plug it within that idea of the school system and really promote that teachers do this correct that's right. That's a new curriculum. That's a really good point. I had, they, they just had a big story about that not too long ago. Uh, Leah. Um, yeah, um, that actually, that brings up a new point of the new, um, there's an English program at the high school, which is like disability literature. So that would be an interesting, the teacher, I think the teacher who did it is the same one who created the LGBTQ literature. So like very like cutting edge English and stuff. But I think it is important to have, um, as narratives and stories are being created by the AC, by Amherst Media, to have people at the ACC like checking in on it, because if it's, I feel like it's easy to like cut something down into like, like I want to make sure that the people represented are being like understood and their stories are being able to told and it's not kind of like cut down to like three sentences because uh, I don't want to feel like like I feel like it is important to have a small video that can like have a lot of widespread but it's also important to remember that like people's stories come first and to edit and interview and present it in like always having how that always having like I did that like with the artist project always thinking about how these artists wanted to represent themselves and having that come first before like using it to project like an agenda of the ACC which obviously I don't think they'd want to do but I think it is important to just make sure it aligns with the presentation that we want to be putting out and to make sure it aligns with the presentation that the artists want to bring up to. Very good point, Leah. I've almost wondered if now you all can shoot it down. But I, I agree that sort of a big deal may seem like fabricated the truth was that in my you know was October being disability in history but could it be almost a panel of these participants where they get this chance to tell their raw story. I, I'd like to make a, a note or based on that comment, Cody, and also on Leah's comment. And this is, I, you know, I think, I'm hearing kind of a lot of like conditions and, and notions that that we can pass along to Amherst Media as a part of the project. So I might suggest, you know, to Leah's point, um, you know, they talk about sort of like a final cut concept, you know, where where we do, you know, the the cultural council and and also, frankly, as Leah said, some of the folks who are who are in the video, you know, do have an approval the right of approval on something before it kind of goes out. Uh, I think that'd be a, a nice way to sort of, you know. Honor, honor that make sure it's the right story and and then Cody to your point and then I think maybe more broadly to this discussion uh, I think it does make sense for you know for us to say to them we want to do this with you but we also want to partner with you on it and you know and let members of the council who are interested reach out to Julian 
um, you know, and have discussions with Amherst Media, like, you know, just, just, we wouldn't do it as a public meeting. We wouldn't, you know, hold a big public meeting, but, but if folks have, you know, a vested interest in it, helping you, you know, be a part of the process, like, I think we could, we could very much put that expectation out there as a part of the contract that, you know, that we're, it's, it's not just, we're going to give them the money. They're going to go off and create something, come back with a polished five minute thing and we're done. Like we want, we do want to have a, uh, we want to have our voice there. And then to Leah's point, we also want to make sure that the stakeholders voices are being heard too. Because we don't want it to turn into like this person talks like and does a 30 minute interview about like their art and their life, their story. And then it gets cut down to like their disability, like defining and yep. being like the factor that's the quote because these are all artists and I think a lot of these people like really care about their art outreach maybe I don't know I don't know if that'd be more or less than disability visibility but I think having both of those things present and I'm sure Amherst Media probably agrees but I just like wanted to say that yeah so um I, I mean, looking at the time and and sort of, I mean, I think we could go pretty deep into content ideas, but I, I also think that if we sort of, if we want to make, you know, a decision to move forward with this, with this sort of partnership with them um, and, you know, kind of commit the funds essentially, you know, we can, we can certainly, you know, if, if somebody's interested in being a content consultant, maybe perhaps uh, Julian, they could just reach out to you and say, Hey, would you please, you know, let, let me see cuts and let me be a part of the conversations, like, and, and just sort of do that in a, you know, organic fashion so that it's like, you know, every, every people, you know, anybody who wants to put in that extra time and that extra thought can. Um, so. Absolutely. And I, I, I think that, uh, you know, their Amherst Media is going to need, you know, additional inputs here. Absolutely. And, I do want to to say though that while we should have inputs, you know, we we also should, you know, the only reason we would commit these kind of funds to, to them is that, um, and I can go into this after this, but uh, we we do have confidence that that they can produce something that's that's meaningful, and I would like to see, you know, yes. Um, artists highlighted it in there but but i also would like the message that we need uh to get out to people applying for grants or whether they're applying for grants or not uh around how can you welcome the community uh some of that stuff that charles baldwin spoke about in, in, our, in our round table as to what what is meaningfully accommodating people you know, uh, I, I think that's Im important in there. And I, I think one of the things we might need to go back to Amherst Media about is that the length of this that they're envisioning um, might not be able to do everything that it needs to do. You know, I don't want to question too much because a one minute commercial is a lifetime when you don't want to watch it. Uh, but three to five minutes is awfully brief at times to get certain messages across. And I'm no expert here and they, they, they are. Um, so just quickly this is kind of an aside thing but they are uh, at no additional cost formatting and and well, i guess editing and uh releasing uh some of the artist showcase work um they're they're preparing those right right now i guess we just have the amherst ballet one that they had done uh which uh we can point all of you to, to that matt it might be online somewhere i'm not sure um already but uh, they have a couple of other pieces they've collaborated with us on that gives us you know a high level of confidence that that they're worthy partners uh to go forward with on this and i certainly welcome working with all of you this is not an area of expertise for me at all not 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 film not accommodations it's, it's just you know generally from the sentiment of of really wanting to benefit the community yeah I would be happy to work with you all and share my insight as a disability advocate. Absolutely. 
and and also you are one of our, our our grantees so you can speak from experience on all sides wonderful yeah robin uh what about the the dollar amount that is on this this letter i not i mean that's what they asked for last year right so are they gonna I'm not sure I understand. They're going to put it for another grant. Or are we going to take it from administrative funds? Because we have to spend the administrative fund. Yeah, the administrative funds here. So they're saying That's that they would be ten thousand dollars or something. Well, we don't. I, I don't. I don't want to go any more than what they've had. But I definitely want to be sure the budget is balanced. So they're saying wow. that they put two hundred and fifty from the 2022 grant towards this, uh, and then it oh, would be two thousand two hundred fifty. Is is that a realistic number? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And, and I don't I know if it's realistic to do what they want to do. Yeah, that that that. Mm -hmm. but, um, but if they're willing to do it, I mean, this is their proposal. I I think yeah, it's pretty cheap. I think. Um, so yeah, we can definitely do that. We're also in the next budget year, so there is, yeah, there, there's there's grant money that wasn't spent from twenty two and even twenty one. Um, and that has to be unencumbered, which means it's been held for those purposes and we release it and we release it into this year's budget uh, to be used. So, yeah. I, I just wanna make sure, wait, this is money that we put aside in, in the granting process. So, you know, for, um, the, for the accessibility round table, this is the money that we put aside with Mass. Yeah, oh, you mean from the accessibility, there's like six, Hundred left. Uh, it, it, this is what we. I mean, I I, I understand the the books in in town might look a little different, but this is what we put aside as a local project this year with with the Mass Cultural Council for this project. So I mean, Julianne took that number from what we presented to them, and and that's you know that's kind of how we got that twenty two fifty. Yeah, if we're still looking to spend. If there's still money, then having a like event around this video, like a release, or I guess it's, if it's five minutes, there wouldn't really be a release, but we could also pay to have this video be shown as like a commercial in front of like Amherst Media things or Amherst, um, or Amherst Cinema or mm -hmm. broadcast it and publicize it in some way or we could put it back into the cycle, but those things to increase the outreach of this video might be interesting. I like the idea of a career. Yeah. So, I, sorry, Cody, I missed that point. That point. No, I just, uh, I like the idea you're muted <laughs> yeah uh, cody's audio is cutting out cody we're gonna we're gonna table this for a second with your audio um i just in the interest of time, I, we, we certainly can, if we want to continue having a broader discussion, we can table this until uh, October and, and pick that back up. I, I personally think that we have enough good will and sort of good feelings towards Amherst Media to approve moving forward with an agreement, you know, and I think uh, the on, ongoing, ongoing input from us and sort of a reciprocal dialogue with them will be important. Um, and I think individual members here can certainly reach out to Julianne and, and be involved in that uh, in kind of an ad hoc format. But I, I, I think that we, I, I personally would support a motion. Um, in fact, I'd be happy to make a motion, you know, that we, that we um, empower Julianne to go forward with, uh, you know, an agreement with Amherst Media to produce a video, you know, within the within the parameters they described there for, for the amount they described there, um, you know, with the understanding that that we want to have continued involvement, creative input, and and um, you know, and we want to make sure that the artists and other subjects of the video have um, 
have approval as well that it's not you know that it's that it's not something that just gets done about them without their input so i'll, I'll go ahead and make that motion to um to empower julian to move that forward i'll say so seconded and then does anybody want to have any further discussion and i and i don't mean to rush this because i this is you know it's, it's a commitment but i i think in the interest of time and good faith um, so why don't we go ahead and vote then um and we'll just do i guess a quick uh roll call um starting with rachel i'm gonna abstain or i would vote no um because i'm so concerned about the representation and how the the approach of this because um anyway i'm do i do i need to, to clarify or can i just cast my vote and i i just don't feel like the way we're going to go about it is setting people up for success and i'm not questioning the professionalism and the dedication of emmer's media and everybody present um so i think there are other ways to use the money to um, contextualize individual applications and what, this, what their accessibility considerations might be based on their particular projects. And I personally felt that Charles's presentation was very good. And um, so that's that's all I have to say on that. Thanks. So I think what we'll do is go ahead and continue the vote, but then we can reopen it up for further discussion um, because, I mean, I point out that, I mean, they definitely focused on highlighting Charles in their video. So I don't know if you saw that part. Um, uh, Christy. Yes. I would vote Robin. yes. Robin. Yes. Um, Toby. Yes. Uh, Eleanor. Yes. Leah. Yes. And Julianne. Yes. Okay, well, I mean, it's one of these things where you hate to not have a unanimous vote on something like this. Um, and, you know, so Rachel, I don't know if you want to just open for further discussion or, or sort of speak more about your... Um, I don't. I don't want to keep people here for a long time because I know I think we're you know already a bit past time. I think my personal concern is that we have all watched our share of training videos, presentations, and I think that with this because if what we're aiming to do is to really make our you know encourage our applicants and ourselves to provide an atmosphere that really. Um, want to include everybody in, in these activities. And I think it's really hard to make a video that's so short, that's going to really um, resonate with people because it's gonna be impacted by, that's, that's why I asked the question in the beginning, what do the creators of this video have in terms of their own experience in working in these areas? So, because I think that would really affect the perspective and the representation. So I think this is, I'm just talking off the top of my head now, but you know, Leah had a good idea about like having people tell their own stories and their full stories. So can we not post somewhere on the town website or create a platform where individual artists can share their own stories that, you know, revolve around this topic. So, um, you know, and then people can just get their own takeaway from it. And that's, it's, that's not really related directly to what we're talking about here in terms of funding Amherst Media. So I think um, that's that's just my personal position. And okay. I, okay. I I think in the interest of time, I mean, I I definitely appreciate the the thoughtfulness of those those points, Rachel. And and I think you know Julianne will do a good job of stewarding a lot of these thoughts and concerns in her communications with. Amherst Media and and you know we'll make sure that we we do our best to have um, representation and, and to let the subjects you know give give approval to their to their stories. Um, but I think those are good thoughts, and I also think that you know we're coming up to a new grant cycle, and and next month we're going to put on the agenda you know a discussion of do we want to do a local activity and what would we like to do. 
Um, and I think, you know, some of those thoughts can inform that that discussion. Um, and I, I do apologize. I, I have to run. I'm, I'm definitely getting pulled into um, some, some bedtime activities that, that really should not. I, I have to go. Um, yep. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Thank you. Go, go take care of everyone. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Uh, as far as the remaining topics, uh, I, I think they could be deferred. It was uh, setting up the uh, deliberation schedule, which we will have to, have to do. And uh, I, I don't think we're in any way prepared to do that this, this evening. So I'll regroup with, with Matt and figure out um, how, how we can uh, take care of that via, via email. It really won't happen um until the soonest would be i think the last month of october but more realistically we probably hit the ground running in november and we'll have to have a whole slate of, of sessions and talk about you know how we'll, we'll conduct this business so that will be all nailed down definitely in the october meeting um but not not something that we can continue with tonight and then the the other piece is a grants update, which it sounds like you and Holly, Robin, are are right. uh, are working through that. So uh, I don't think we can really fully do that no. just tonight either. So no, we, don't, we don't have that. Yeah. Um, I does anyone have any other business to attend to this evening? Well, could I quickly say something, just like very shortly, in response to Rachel before it leaves my brain? I was going to say one of the most, when I did um, interviews, one of the things that I think we should like pass on before this project is before the filmed interview, I had a phone call with the people I interviewed and we just like talked for like an hour, sometimes like over an hour about what their work was, like what was important to them. And then based off of that, I wrote up questions based yeah. off of the conversation and then I emailed them to them before the interview and so that way it was felt more in control of the people being interviewed and I think if we see it as a model of like like doing that like not just like having cameras like kind of a more gradual approach I think that could be a way to center the people more in it and I'm sorry to take up more time but that was just something that it's great maybe worked with them we could pass on to them because I think it worked really well especially for people who was like their first time being interviewed it definitely like helped with nerves it's like mm -hmm. the the yeah. first thing I'm going to add is that is that I'm going to ask Jim to you know from Amherst Media for him and any of its staff that are participating to watch you know this portion of the recording because we spent a lot of time on this and, and I think the best way for him um, to process this is, is to hear it from all of you, which is possible because we've recorded this meeting. Um, so thank you. And, and Rachel, I, I very much hear where you're, you're coming from. Me too. Respect that. So I'm, I'm sorry, you were going to say, Rachel? Oh, I was just going to say that with the best of intentions, there will be, there will just be things that are left out and i'm not saying that you know it has to it has to address everything but it's just not knowing who the audience is going to be mm -hmm. i really find mm -hmm. it very difficult it's it's almost like an impossible task if i work because i've done productions myself so it's like from the perspective of amherst media and especially having all these content consultants and people approving uh, I, I yeah i hopefully it'll be more power to you and i appreciate that you're you know, taking this on so um, so I don't, I don't have, you know, I, I was going to preface what I was going to say. With, I'm going to say something that's really unpopular, I'm sure. However, um, it's, um, it's just a concern I have. It's a valid concern. It's yeah. a valid concern. I, I, I don't have any authority to be able to, to approve something like this, that, that it is qualified to, to, to speak to this, you know, but we do have a lot of people who, who want to promote awareness and and to help our grantees uh, achieve this. So I, I think we have a way to do it. And I think hopefully the good intent and the skills of those involved will be enough to to carry this through. But this is not going to be ready in time for this grant cycle anyway, right? No, it's a more long term thing. So. Right. OK. Yeah. Then I think, yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth worthwhile yes. doing. It's just more like, okay, you know, the, the, the implementation, I can just see being yeah. very 
yes um, challenging so yes but but it, there's no you know <laughs> no, so <laughs> Thank you all. It's nice to see you. I'm going to put down we're adjourning the meeting. You need to, yes, I motion to adjourn. All in favor? <laughs> I think everyone. Julian, I'll send you a mat the minutes. Am I supposed to send it to everybody or just to you? No, no. You, you send it to, to me, me and Matt, please. And okay. then. All right. Thank you so and much. Hopefully I've captured the basics. Okay. The, the Thank you all. Thank you all. Have a good Bye. evening. Good evening. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs>